as we start to unravel the conundrum and complex condition of long COVID, we're starting to get more of an understanding of the mechanism of how it happens and also potentially underlying contributing factors which pose more of a risk of developing it. In this video today, we're gonna to discuss one potential factor which may be underlying and contributing to the maintenance of the long COVID condition and has been found to be underlying in many, many other types of condition. There's a large body of evidence to indicate that it's playing a dominant role in the development of things like ADHD and other behavioral type disorders, neuro neuropsychological type conditions, neurodegeneration like Alzheimer's dementia. It's also been shown to play a heavy role in cardiometabolic type issues like diabetes and heart disease. It's been shown to be almost an independent risk factor risk factor for cardiovascular disease, in fact. The other area we'll see it show up in is in the immune system. So it's been shown to be positively correlated with the onset of things like autoimmune disease, allergies, asthma, dermatitis, chronic infections, food sensitivities and reactions, and also energy-based illness, such as mitochondrial dysfunction and the disorders we see related to that, chronic fatigue, pain type disorders, fibromyalgia, and osteoporosis. So this factor I'm talking about is the factor of underlying toxins. Now, before we get started with this video, I wanna make this quite clear. This is not a video about potential toxins that came in the vaccine, and it is yet to be established in research as a definite underlying cause for poor responses to vaccines or infection. This is mainly based off of my own work with clients with long COVID and my own observations in how this can come around. However, it's part of this larger picture of other contributing factors underlying in someone's health, which may have generated their long COVID condition. And for me, it's one of the major factors which are a silent factor underlying this condition and many others. As we can see in that long list of conditions and health issues we listed off at the start, we can see how this plays a very heavy role in our health and it's becoming more and more established in the research. So what do we mean by toxins? So firstly, there is a large debate within the medical world of how valid this point is. Because on one side, you have the toxicologist arguing that the usual daily exposures to environmental toxins by people are far below what they deem as toxic levels. And on the other hand, you have the endocrinologist arguing that even though they're low levels, they have a significant impact on things like hormone production and hormone signaling. So just because toxins may not be acutely at toxic levels within the blood, which is typically where they measure them, if you go to your doctor or emergency service with a potential toxin exposure, it can be the chronic underlying low levels of accumulative toxins over time that can really interact with our physiology. And we're going to go through why that is a little bit. So this is less about the individual toxin. You know, we have many, many toxins uh, around us these days. In our modern world, it's because we're living in a very toxic world and it's really concerning and drives a lot of anxiety when you start looking into this. Um, but effectively, what we have this thing called our body burden of toxins where all of these individual toxins accumulate in the body and add up and then we generate what we call the body burden. And therefore, those with a larger body burden of accumulated toxins tend to have more issues rather than being the single individual toxin. So a lot of this relates to things such as heavy metals and particulates, things like um, arsenic, which by the way, estimated about 100 million people in the world are exposed to via mainly drinking water. And this is not just Low, lower economic um, 
less developed countries. This is everywhere, Europe, Americas, everywhere. So, you know, we're all exposed to these things. So things such as arsenic, mercury, you know, which for a long time we were putting in our mouth, um, lead, cadmium, and a whole host of other ones. Um, we also get a lot of exposure to, th to chemicals. So things like pesticide, which is commonly found in non-organic food. Also herbicides, things like glyphosate, which are so prevalent in the environment. They don't break down and they persist in the environment. So, you know, it washes off our food into the water supply, into the sea, which gets into our fish and gets into our food and just recycles through and maintains the environment. So especially larger animals like ourselves, we tend to accumulate these things because we just live longer and therefore accumulate more of them through life. And that's exactly the same thing we see with like larger fish, they tend to have much higher levels of heavy metals because they're larger, they live longer, they accumulate more things throughout life. Now it tends to be with the toxin picture is, you know, most of us, you know, deal with toxins, even though we're exposed to far more than we used to be because of industrial procedures and agricultural practices now. Um, most of us, you know, seem to deal with it okay despite having this sort of chronic buildup of toxins going on, it tends to be fairly subclinical in the majority. Now I say that with a bit of caution because what we know about our health in the modern era is that you know, the majority of illnesses are going up and up and up. So just because we haven't paired toxins specifically to a certain condition, they're definitely a contributing factor. However, it seems to be this shows up more with people and becomes more evident when they have a higher toxin burden and they don't detox well. And that often comes down to genetics and also nutrition. So we need really a lot of good nutrition to support our liver to be able to detox and take care of these things. But coming back to the long COVID picture. So how may this play a role in long COVID? Well, we've already discussed how this can contribute to many, many different types of immune disorders. It causes immune dysfunction. And the reason for that is because the immune system essentially sees toxins as foreign invading, freaky looking like structures, which are dangerous. And therefore it's going to mount its defense against them just like it would with an infection. So this can contribute to low levels and chronic underlying inflammation with the body with the immune system being switched on. And we know with COVID-19, it's the inappropriate excessive amount of inflammation from immune dysfunction which causes us the issues. So we know heavy metals can interact with our immune system but potentially generate this type of effect. However, we can see when this starts to manifest a little bit more is when this chronic underlying body burden starts to move from being subclinical to more clinical and starting to cause direct symptoms. Now it will do that when we have excessive stress placed upon the system. And that can come in the form of mental stress, it can come in the form of more chemical stress and so more toxins or acute exposure to toxins, poor food, um, inflammatory type eating or drinking, um, and also physical stress like trauma. So any type of stress can put a burden on this and promote more of these things starting to manifest clinically. Because what we know about stress in any form is it shuts down our liver and detox function. So therefore the liver is not able to cope with the toxins being exposed to us on a daily basis as well. So we get effectively a backup of toxins in the body. We get a larger body burden, more toxins going around the bloodstream, get interacting with our organs. 
and promoting inflammation. So we can see how directly you know, the last few years have really led into this picture. So we've all been way more stressed than we have over the last couple of years. We've been driven by lots of fear, economical concerns of late, war in the East. You know, there's a lot of stress going on. However, the same impact of stressors, we can see exactly the same thing with, you know, inflammation. So if we have something that induces inflammation, provides an inflammatory trigger, we see exactly the same impact. So we can see a mechanism for how when we receive a vaccine or we have an infection, that's going to really impact our liver's ability to deal with toxins. We start to get accumulate more toxins in the body. They back up into the bloodstream. They get interact with our tissues. So we typically see our mitochondria being impacted by increased toxins. We start to see our immune system being impacted by this. We see our antioxidants being depleted. So we can start to see how this becomes very similar to what we see with long COVID, you know, a lot of energy issues, fatigue, MCAS and inflammation going on and a depletion of things like glutathione. And that's exactly what we tend to see on testing when we look at these long COVID people. You know, there's, there's a very similar picture going on here. Now, coming back to the immune system again, aside from like detox and liver, you know, when we talk about the immune system a little bit more, we can see how this just adds to that cup of things the immune system is dealing with. So, you know, our immune system has a capacity of what it's taking control of and in, in, in doing in the body. So, you know, it might be some chronic underlying infections going on, EBV, types of candida species in the gut. There could be food sensitivities going on, uh, reactions to food. Um, but then, you know, if we have this process happening, we induce the vaccine or infection again, uh, and then we have this more underlying uh, higher burden of toxins, which becomes larger because of the inflammation shutting down T-tox. Um, we start to see this overspill and the immune system can no longer um, keep within its capacity everything it needs to do. And that's particularly when we enter this state of systemic ongoing inflammation, autoimmune disease. Um, so this isn't, you know, a single causing factor for, you know, all along COVID, but it contributes to this. And this is why it's important to look for when we're navigating getting out of any type of chronic illness uh, and long COVID. Now, before you run out the door and start stressing about toxins and whether they're present with you, I would say the first thing to do with this whole question is to, you know, firstly start working with someone, work with a functional medicine practitioner, someone that can help you to identify whether this is happening in you. And you can do that through a variety of tests. So um, I've been using especially Great Plains to help identify this with people. Um, so you can get an oat test to start with, and that's a really good entry level to sort of look at multiple different systems in the body and what may be, may be playing around. You get some indications of, you know, antioxidants going down, potential toxins being present through the patterns you tend to see within the results. So it's really important to work with someone who knows how to interpret an oat test because there's lots of patterns which mean particular things which can point to things like that. Off of the back of there, you can um, look at chemicals. If you suspect that um, GPL, it's a Great Plains Tox Panel is a good one. Um, then you can do things like hair elements for heavy metals. And also a big one to look at is mold and mycotoxins, the toxin that is related to, to mold exposure. And I haven't discussed mold yet in this picture, but mold is especially one thing I've been seeing in a lot of long COVID clients coming to me, um, which plays a significant impact in interacting with the immune system, causing underlying inflammation. And we see mold really manifesting with a lot of immune type issues.
So the first thing is to really identify it. Do testing to identify this. It's always best to test, don't guess, because then you know what you're dealing with and you can identify then what to do as a solution. And this is just taking, you know, one of these things out of the cup that your body's dealing with to get it back in capacity. And if we can do that, then it's more than likely the body returns to homeostasis, returns to that balance point. So I'm interested to hear, like if you've had testing like these things done in the past with other practitioners and found that playing a role within long COVID or post vaccine illness, you know, let us know, drop it in the comments, what has been playing a role in you.